Hey there, thank you so much for deciding to stop by and hang out with me for a few minutes today. I really do appreciate your time. Um, today's video was actually brought to my attention by the developer of the container that we're gonna take a look at. I, I received an email from a developer uh, who said they've got this new, this new application that they're working on and wanted to make sure that I was aware of it because we've actually looked at one of his projects in the past. Uh, what we're gonna take a look at today is called Enclosed, but this is also the same developer from IT Tools. So like I mentioned, he said that he was working on this app that we're taking a look at right here. This is Enclosed. This is the app. This is all of it, and I kind of dig it, and I wanna show you why. Um, there is no administration on this. It is just an application that, just so we don't get this screwed up here, we're gonna come over to the GitHub, it is a minimalistic web app designed for sending private and secure notes. Now you may, if you've been following this channel for a while, you may already be aware that we've covered a topic like this, another container called Cryptgen. Uh, like I guess they, you know, the, in, the, in the World War II times and that sort of thing, they used pigeons to send messages and that sort of thing. So I think that's where they got their their naming, their, their whole uh, thing here. But uh, this is another version of that, again, called Enclosed again, by the same developer uh, who who, did, who gave us ITtools.com and of course the self-hosted uh, version of that. So like I said, this is enclosed.cc, um, but because it's how we do things here, we're gonna jump over to my instance over here at enclosed.dbtech.dev. Uh, this may or may not still be up. I will probably take it down for lots of reasons, but uh, here we can see up at the top, it's got you know the name of the uh, the instance, which of course, or the application, I suppose, and it's a little sub thing here. This says send private and secure notes. Up at the top, we've got the option to send a new note, uh, which just doesn't really do anything here because we're on the page, it doesn't matter. However, if you send it, anyway, we'll, we'll cover that. Anyway, up here, we've also got GitHub, we've got dark mode and light mode or system mode, whatever you've got going on. We've also got some translations, which I appreciate. We've got English and French. And then if you want to, co uh, to contribute to that, you absolutely can by using the link underneath that. And then up here at the top, at the very top, we've got uh, documentation, CLI, report a bug, and support enclosed. So that's kind of the top bar covered there. Uh, of course, next we've got the big text area where you can put your note in there. Uh, we can password protect the note if we wanna do that by just entering a password. Now we can manually type in a password if we wanna do that or uh, we can see that that was just me mashing away at the keys there, um, or we can uh, just have it generate uh, a random password if we wanna do that. Just make sure that before you send this to someone else that you, you copy that so you can send them the password as well. Below that, of course, we can make this expire in an hour, a day, a week, or a month, or delete it right after it being read by toggling uh, by toggling right there. And uh, when he sent me the initial email uh, about what he was doing, I was like, this is cool, but there are a couple of things that I would like to see. Um, and one of those was attaching files. Uh, like I mentioned, we've covered a similar application in the past called CryptGen, um, and that application uh, allowed for that. So I wanted to definitely see it if it was going to be not necessarily competing with, but being an alternate to. So uh, within like a day, he responded back almost immediately saying that was already in the works. And like within the next day, uh, notes were added to this. And of course, you know, you can just click on attach a file um, and then you can go over here and select a document. I don't, I just refreshed or re, re, reinstalled Windows on this. So I don't have any documents, but, um, but you can absolutely do that. You know what, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over to lipsum.com slash feed slash HTML. Uh, and we're just gonna grab some random lorem ipsum text. And then, and then we're gonna do this. We're gonna do note, if I could type note. Where did it go? Where is my note? There it is. Man, we're just gonna paste that in there. We're gonna call this a note. We're gonna put it in documents cause you know, it's technically a document. And then we're gonna grab some more text. We're just gonna do this, right? We're gonna come back over here to my install. We're gonna paste in some text. We're gonna attach a file. Uh, we're gonna go back to, to documents. We're gonna find note. Um, we're not gonna put a password on there because I don't wanna deal with it, but you absolutely can. Um, we're not gonna delete it immediately, right? We're gonna, we're gonna skip that part for right now. 
But we've got our text here, uh, our, our message or whatever, we've got an attachment, and then we can just click on create note. And right there, it has said note created successfully, your note has been created. You can now share it using the following link. And I really, really appreciate that it's a very long convoluted URL string or, or character string there that's even got, um, you know, it's got uppercase and lowercase and it's got special characters and it's got numbers and it's got all of the stuff that you would want in a really good password. That's the URL string that you're gonna have to access. So we can copy that and paste it in there. And there it is, there is our, our note uh, content and our attachment for that. And then we've got the option to either uh, click copy to, uh, to clipboard uh, or, or of course we can leave, or like I kind of alluded to earlier, we can send a note by clicking the new note up there at the top. So again, based on my knowledge, there's no way to go back and look through existing notes. There's no administrative dashboard to go in here and look through the notes or delete notes or anything like that. So you're definitely going to want to be careful about who you give access to this to, I guess. Anyway, um, because you don't want people possibly uploading malicious files or, or, or things that you don't want on your server. Yeah, I know there's an obfuscation layer where you would probably set be, be not, criminally indicted or something, but just be careful with this because there is no way to monitor what's going on on your server here. Be very, very careful about who you let know about this if you decide to host it for yourself. And the reason I say that is this, um, this application has to work or has to be installed on an actual HTTPS URL. Um, with the new version, I, I got it installed and I tried to send a note and it threw an error message at me. Um, and I, I, I emailed the developer. We went back and forth through through email instead of GitHub. But uh, after we went back and forth through several emails, we both realized almost at the exact same time, um, or, or, or we sent an email, I guess, to each other at almost the exact same time saying, hey, by the way, this has to be on HTTPS uh, because otherwise it just, it won't work. You will always throw errors. So that is something to keep in, in mind with this, with Enclosed is that it has to be on HTTPS in order for it to work. Like this isn't, I don't feel like this is something that you would have on your local network to send messages back and forth to your roommates or your spouse or your kids. Like it just doesn't make sense to keep it local. So I'm not upset that it has to be on HTTPS, but just be aware that if you wanted to install this locally, it still has to be on an HTTPS URL. So just, just something I wanted to make you aware of. So, um, that's that's it, man. That that is really all there is to to the dashboard, to sending messages, to that sort of thing. Um, so with that out of the way, let's actually take a look at at what the Docker Compose looks like this, or for this rather. Uh, we'll take a quick gander through the GitHub as well as the hub.docker.com. So um, since since GitHub is literally my next tab, let's jump over here and take a look. Uh, we can see that this was this is this was four hours ago, right? Like this is this is actively being worked on. Um, so, so definitely understand that it, he is working on it. Things may be subject to change. If you're watching, you will be watching this in the future because you can't be watching it while I'm recording this. Um, things may change. Um, and if, if things change, I don't have any control over that. Um, so uh, maybe if you find a change, let us know in the comment section down below. But uh, if there's a change that, that I don't sh or a change after I release this video and you've got questions or, or whatever about that change, you're gonna wanna go over here to the GitHub and, and, and go up here to the top to issues and file an issue or, or feature request or whatever. Uh, I don't have any control over any of the changes is what I'm trying to say here. So um, also while you're here, you can dig through the code if you want to do this. Um, there are a couple of different versions of this. Um, there, there's a standard version and a rootless version, depending on what your security need happen to be. Um, 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 what else? We've got a demo, we've got docs, we've got CLI, we've got self-hosting. We've got more information about enclosed the application, its features, uh, which includes end-to-end -end encryption. Your notes are encrypted on the client side using an AES GCM uh, with a 256-bit derived uh, using PBKDF2. I know I stuttered a lot there, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, we've got file attachments now, we've got zero knowledge, so the, the server does not have access to the content of the notes or files. That's that's kind of what I was saying earlier. Uh, there's no way for your server admin or you as the server admin to go in and see what notes have been shared. There's nothing there. We've got configurable ser server or security options with setting a uh, password, expiration time, and self-destruction after the note is read. So. Again, we kind of covered that in our little demo. We've got a minimalistic UI, we've got dark mode, we've got responsive design. 
Uh, I'm actually glad that he put that in there. So let's actually go back. Let's go back to here, right? This, this is our desktop view of the application. Um, and if we drop this down, oh, you know, we can minimize. We can actually close that, I don't care. So if we, if we shrink this down to be very narrow, that was very slick in the way it changed its, its layout. Um, and the reason I'm really glad about that is because I get a lot of comments on applications like this saying, well, if there's no app, I'm not gonna use it. That seems silly to me um, because most of the apps that we take a look at are responsive, meaning, meaning that they will work without an application. You can just go to the URL on your phone. In fact, on your phone, you can even usually send it to your, to your, to your home screen as a shortcut so it responds like an app. It just happens in the browser. Um, so, so I guess my, my, my thought here is not every app needs, or not, sorry, not every, not every service that we run needs an application. Most of them run really, really well in the browser. And in fact, probably run better in the browser than they would in an app. And it allows the developer to spend more time working on the actual application, not the app, but the actual application to make it more feature rich and make it work better rather than have to split his time between, between the application and the app. So, um, so I, I, I hope some of you can kind of change your thinking in, in regards to that. Not everything we talk about needs an app for your phone. It works very, very well in the browser on your phone. So anyway, let's, let's continue on. I've ranted enough. I'm on the wrong page. There we go. Uh, open source, we, like I talked about, you can go through the code. You can look through it yourself. You can fork it. You can do what you want with it. It's open source, it's self-hostable, and there's a command line interface for creating notes from the terminal. We're not gonna do that. I don't like the terminal as much as I like a graphical user interface, mostly because I'm lazy, but also because I'm kind of dumb some days, and this is one of those days. So below that, we've got self-host. You can try it with Docker. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. Um, to go further, please refer to the self-hosting documentation uh, over there. We're gonna pop that open in a new window. You can set up persistent storage. You can set up a rootless image. Um, and again, all of that's in the docs. So let's jump over there. There's more on how it works, but but you can read. I believe in you. I, I, I believe you can do that. So let's jump over to here. Docker installation prerequisites, root and not non-rootless images. So starting from version 1.5.1, enclosed, provi enclosed provides both rootless and not non-rootless Docker images. The rootless image is tagged as uh, rootless or latest dash rootless or version dash rootless allowing you to run the container without requ requiring root privileges. This is useful in environments where running root containers or where running containers as root is discouraged for uh, security reasons. Absolutely. So you can run it either way. He's got tags for all of that. Um, there's image sources. There's a basic Docker run uh, or sorry, Docker hub, uh, GitHub, lots of different stuff in here. He explains all of the different commands, all of the environment variables and the ports and all of that down here. There's an option for volume persistence if you wanna do that route versus not having persistence, that's up to you. Again, more information about all of that. Um, and then of course, more information about uh, using and updating enclosed. Um, if we jump over here to the hub.docker.com, um, Again, we've got more information here. The, the image was last updated two days ago over here for the Docker image. Um, and again, a bunch more information on how to run it. We're actually gonna use the Docker Compose right here um, when we get to that point. But again, if we take a look at the tags, um, here we can see uh, the different tags. We've got rootless uh, 161, latest rootless, once, and we've also got latest. Uh, down here, like there's lots of different images in here. Now, I know that I'm going to get comments asking if this will currently work on Raspberry Pi. Uh, based on what I'm seeing right here, uh, it absolutely should. It, it has ARM support right there, as well as a desktop processor or server processor support. Um, so, so any of the tags that we tack onto here should work without any issue whatsoever. So, um, so yeah, it's it's very open source. The developers done a really good job on documenting everything. Um, so if you've got questions or anything about, about the application itself, does it do this? Can it do that? Will it do this? Will it do that? Whatever. Definitely jump over to the GitHub repository. Uh, look through the issues, both open and closed. There are currently a total of 17. Um, so, so definitely take a look at all of that. Uh, see if your question has already been asked. If it hasn't, definitely uh, drop, drop an issue in here for features or whatever the case happens to be. 
Um, dude, dude's super responsive, or at least has been to me. Um, and he's closed out, you know, a good chunk of, uh, of the issues that have been opened. So uh, I feel like this is going to be one of those containers that, that will be actively worked on for a while. So yeah, with all of that said, let's take a look at how easy it is to get this deployed. So what we're gonna do is jump back over here um, somewhere. No, we're gonna do it over here, I think. We're gonna scroll down on the GitHub page. We're gonna scroll down, we're gonna scroll down. I lied, it's over here on the hub.docker.com page. Everything, as per usual, will be linked in the video description. So we're gonna scroll down. We're just gonna grab this Docker Compose right here. Now, um, we're not going to grab the version 3.8. The newest version of Docker, Docker Compose, whatever, does not require versions. In fact, um, you'll get yelled out for using them by the script. So we're not going to use the version 3.8 but we are going to use a version that has persistent storage. Whether you wanna do that or not is completely up to you. There are other options in here uh, for Docker run commands or whatever that don't have the persistent storage. Grab the one that makes the most sense for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna jump back over here to Portainer. Uh, we're gonna come over to Stacks uh, and we're going to add a stack and then, then we're gonna change some things because I've already got this running as an instance and I don't want to deploy a new Proxmox LXC to do this. So um, we've got our, let's, let's tell you what, let's give it a name first. And now that we have that, we've got our service, which is enclosed. Our image is um, Quarantenth. I know I screwed that up. I apologize, slash enclosed. Um, I'm just gonna throw latest on here just because it is, it usually assumes latest, but just so there's no assumption, we're just gonna put that in. If you're already using port 8787, uh, you can change the first half of this to like, you know, 9999, like I've done there. Don't change the, the colon or anything after it. It's gonna screw things up. Next, we need a path to where we want our, our, our container to be stored. So I'm gonna do um, home docker uh, enclosed tut. And then the restart policy even less stopped, perfectly acceptable. But if you wanna change it to something else, you can absolutely do that. But that's all there is for this container um, as far as setting it up. There aren't any additional environment variables. There's nothing else you need to do here. So we can just scroll down and click on deploy the stack. We'll give it just a second here to deploy. And um, do, do, do enclosed, that, that's today's date. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up. And I'm gonna click right there where it says 9999. Uh, if you wanna take a look at the logs, you can. There's not a lot in there. Um, so we're gonna click on this 9999. And I wanna demonstrate something while we're here. Um, let's grab another lore MIP something here. Um, nope, we're gonna close that. We're on 99.99, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. I'm just gonna paste in this note and I'm gonna click create note. And right here we can see an error occurred while creating the note, please try again. Uh, if we pop open um, the, the console over here, right here, right there gave us the, the, the message that we needed to determine that this does in fact need to be run on HTTPS. So that's the demonstration I wanted to show that this will not work on just a standard IP address. You gotta put this on HTTPS for it to work. So, um, so that, that's, that is enclosed. That's, that's kind of going through the demo, uh, going through both uh, the, the GitHub repository as well as um, the, the hub.docker.com page. Um, before we jump out of this though, let's take a look. Um, so Enclosed currently has 152 stars. I'd like to see that number go way up. So if you guys could help him out by giving this a star, maybe following it, that would be amazing. It would also obviously encourage him to keep working on this project. I think it's a great project and I hope you guys uh, will at least take a look at it on your own setups for the sake of just giving something new a try. Um, if you want to support the channel here, there's a couple of, of easy ways you can do that. You can uh, you can you can like and you can subscribe down below. Uh, you can also become a channel member. But if you want to support financially, I actually encourage you to jump over to Patreon. Um, it's cheaper. It's it's easier to manage. If I'm being completely honest. And uh, you, you get your name up there. Um, that's just something recently I've started doing. I know it's not much, but uh, you'll also get early access when it's available, but you'll always get ad-free access. That's no baked in ads. That's no YouTube ads, none of that stuff. Just the content that you're here for. So again, over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, but that is completely up to you. No, of course, not required. Um, but I think with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. Again, I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.